It's been suggested to Gaijin many times that modern tech trees and World War II tech trees be separated. In my opinion, this is a complicated process that would entail so many reworks and will probably be broken before it evens itself out. All break mechanics, anyone? But since I've seen many a comment saying that splitting modern and World War II trees is the key to implement modern vehicles, let's weigh the pros and cons and see if the split is really worth the effort or an exercise in futility. For this, I'll run through 5 major pros and I'll explain each point and then run through 5 major cons and do the same. Before we get started, it's best to define to what degree World War II trees and modern trees are separated. For this video, separating them means they're separated like coastal fleet and blue water fleet vehicles currently, occupying the same game mode and be placed in the same lineup but researching different vehicles altogether. On top of this, let's also define vehicles that count as modern from those that don't. For the purposes of this video, a World War II vehicle is a vehicle that had an example that was produced before September 2, 1945, the signing of the surrender of Japan and the official end of World War II. However, if a modern only nation used a World War II vehicle, it is considered a modern vehicle. For example, East Germany used T-34 85s until they received T-54s in 1956. Japan received their M24 Chaffee in 1952, and Israel used BF-109s and H-35 tanks in 1948. For the first pro, we have choices. When trees are split between modern and World War II, players are free to choose what era they want to play. A lot of players saw playing War Thunder because they are baited by modern equipment in ads only to find that it's walled off behind a grueling grind or a paywall of premium vehicles which in itself are limited in choice. By splitting the tech trees, players are freer to play how they want and tailor their War Thunder experience more in line with their expectations. Along with this, freedom of choice also allows World War II only players to play only World War II vehicles and enjoy the game from that perspective. For those who want both, they are also free to mix and match their lineups with World War II vehicles and modern vehicles. When tech trees are split between modern and World War II, the possibilities are endless. Number 2 major pro would be events. If Gaijin decides to create fun and interesting events again, World War II and modern can have their own interesting events. Now that World War II trees have ships, World War II events can now have three branches supporting the Normandy landings, later landings, and so on and so forth. For modern, since we do not have modern ships to the degree of guided missile cruisers or the like, we can have branch specific events like Victor Alert, Operation Assur, and etc. I'll discuss more about possible events for modern vehicles in a different video because it's really, in it's really interesting to get in depth with those events and I really want to discuss them. Third pro would be economy. With modern vehicles being treated as a new tree altogether, we might see a reduction in research costs the way we saw coastal fleets receive when they were moved to tier 1. This would benefit everyone new to the game wishing only to play modern vehicles and those wishing to only enjoy modern content by equalizing the grind time for both trees instead of heavily focusing it on the far end. In line with this, purchase and crew costs are also going to be lowered for modern vehicles at low tiers, heavily reducing the strain on the players to grind silver lions for their vehicles. Number 4 pro would be nations. Modern vehicles will give way to modern only nations such as Israel, South Korea, and the Czech Republic. With these, we can receive more vehicles and more variety in top tier and can pave a way for newer mechanics and gimmicks that Gaijin can implement to extend the game life for the future. This solves the current issue of War Thunder of vehicles finding no trees to be put in because they're too small to be a proper tree but have very desirable vehicles. 
And on existing nations, you can bet that Gaijin will insert so many variants in order to pad out modern tech trees. Number 5 major pro would be mechanics. Speaking of mechanics, Splitting Trees in 2 will allow modern vehicles to participate in NATO versus Block type of World War mode where Germany can occupy both sides, queuing with the specific vehicles of each side. Other than that, current modern mechanics can be improved until Gaijin can craft an entirely different game feel for modern and for World War II. Well, this last one is far-fetched but I also hope it occurs and it is game maps. I hope that when modern becomes a separate entity, modern vehicles start playing in modern maps and World War II vehicles can play in World War II maps. I'd hope these maps are inspired by real-life Cold War events such as Able Archer 83 having Soviet to NATO fight in East Germany, Battle of Kafji in Saudi Arabia, the Battle of Yalu River in North Korea. If Gaijin returns historical team ups, there could also be Chinese versus Soviet matchup in Demansky Island. While I know that Gaijin can already just do this now, it would be easier to do it when the trees are split. And now we move on to the cons. The first con would be rewards. With tech trees split and less vehicles to grind per tree, you will definitely see a decrease in rewards to artificially inflate the grind. These will include restructuring the tiers for tier 1 to 5 modern vehicles and lowering their RP and SL percentages to lengthen the grind. Number 2 con is premiums. Since modern tanks are now tier 1 to 5 and instead of tier 5 to 7, Premiums will have to be readjusted in price and rewards. While this is a benefit to people who haven't purchased the premiums, people who bought it will feel robbed. The reward to end tier premiums will even be more expensive. Number 3 con would be research. Top tier World War II vehicles in the tech tree will no doubt have their RP cost raised as well. It will be exactly like the early days of War Thunder. Now with modern vehicles facing your top tier World War II vehicles in a more difficult grind. With trees split between modern and World War II, you, you bet you can see Tiger 2s at 220,000 RP and um, things like the Kugel Blitz at 270,000 RP. Number 4 con would be skill issues. Since new players get to hop on modern trees without the time it takes to grind to it, we'll end up with a large portion of modern-only players whose skill is equal to that of a premium player that bought their very first F5Z or G91. Well, both sides of the tree will be divided into two camps. The new players that can't find their own ass with an INS, and people who have been playing this game for 5 years. I can probably tell what kind of aircraft is on that dot 35 kilometers away better than an ANAWG 66 V3 Pulse Doppler radar. It will definitely tank win rates of popular nations of each tree and will cause more issues as time go on, adding fuel to the fire that is already the premium buy-in issue. Number 5 con would be imbalance. There will definitely be an issue of balance with modern trees starting with the starting vehicles. Big nations would be starting with their M41A1 and F80Cs, and on the other hand, some nations would be using M24s and BF109s. While battle ratings were there to alleviate the issue, starting out a tree with a BF109 with the Israeli tree would still be different from starting the British modern tree with a beaker F4. Splitting the trees would complicate the game even further and serve to create more issues than we already have. I think that splitting the trees between modern World War II is not the same as splitting them like blue water in coastal trees as it requires more intricate work and meticulous implementations to even begin to make sense. In the end, it will be a task too tedious, and I believe the tech tree is the least of War, Th War Thunder's problems. Let me know what you think in the comments below.
We'll restart the How to Implement series as soon as I gather enough information for the first video. This is the Dr. MD returning to the base.